today we're going to be doing a what I eat in a day video because it's been a really long time since I've done one of these and since my last what I eat in a day video I feel like I've definitely made some diet changes still all vegan but as you know there are a million different ways to eat a vegan diet because it's a lifestyle not necessarily a prescriptive diet like whole 30 or paleo or anything like that you can even be whole 30 or paleo while being vegan I mean there are just so many different ways to eat a vegan diet. So today I'm gonna to show you a little bit of what food has been looking like for me lately. And as always, you guys know what I'm gonna say, what I eat in a day videos across the board should never be taken as a meal plan or prescriptive. If anything, just take away from it recipe inspiration and ideas for vegan meals. Let's get right into it and make some matcha so that I can talk to you guys while I do that. I'm hoping you guys can hear me okay because whenever I'm in the kitchen, the sound, thanks to the fridge, is not great when I'm not using a mic. I'm making a matcha latte before the gym. I'm using Rocky's matcha today. Just one of many that I have open right now. I'll show you guys my matcha collection if you haven't already seen it on my Instagram. So I've been drinking Calafia milk for a really long time, but I really like these new ones because these are made with just three ingredients. So this one, the almond milk, is literally just almonds, water, and salt. And then the oat milk, oats, salt, and water. So for anyone out there who's like, Plant-based milks are so unhealthy and they have all these like seed oils and gums. These are amazing. There's just something about certain homemade almond milks that taste like you're just eating raw almonds. And I don't like it, like not in a good way. Anyway, I've been liking like a mix of the two, which I feel like is a little high maintenance, but I don't know. This is what I've been into lately. I know it's not a lot, but I like to have something in me before the gym and I feel like this does the trick because We've got some almond and oat milk. Mm. I think the things that have changed the most for me are gluten, protein, and just more balance. The thing about being gluten-free and vegan for me is that I eat vegan by choice, but gluten-free is not something I do by choice. And when the option is worth it, in my opinion, I'll just eat the gluten and have some digestive enzymes in addition. But for the most part, with fermented gluten, like sourdough and things like that, I don't really have so much of an issue. Barley is okay with me. Um, I have never gone like super overboard in a day, but primarily this applies to when I'm eating out. But I just feel like with fun vegan products that come out, oftentimes they're vegan and not gluten-free. And part of the job is to try out new vegan things and share with you guys. So I end up eating gluten here and there, and I'm just not super strict about it anymore. But that being said, all the recipes that I share on the blog are still vegan and gluten-free. So not much has really changed. It's more of like a personal thing and what I'm eating in real life. The second change is protein. A little more conscious of incorporating some kind of protein at each meal if I can just because I can actually truly get away with just eating whatever like macros don't impact my body too too much I've noticed because I think I am a little bit more naturally lean it's a blessing and a curse because I can eat kind of whatever and not notice too many body changes it's a curse because that's a disservice to all the work that I'm doing to build muscle and obviously I'm not really building muscle when I'm not feeding the muscle the right things so we are in our protein era but the biggest problem I'm having is lately I feel like I'm just kind of grossed out by protein powder I'm in this phase where I can't really stomach protein bars and protein powders as much as I used to be able to so I'm trying to find my favorite new brands just so that I could like incorporate it for easy days when I'm in a rush you know and the last thing is balance I really feel like for me especially as somebody with a past history of eating disorders it's so important for me to be able to eat fun foods and I think there are certain foods that I didn't even realize I was inherently avoiding or like afraid of or just never really ate much as a kid because my eating disorder started when I was seven years old. So there are a lot of things that most people have eaten as a kid that I just kind of shied away from and never really ate very much. It's just been very random and I'm embracing it. I am not one to be super afraid of like seed oils and things like that. Um, I think everything in moderation is okay. My stance on healthy food is kind of interesting because I'm definitely all for whole food plant-based diet the majority of the time, but I'll also eat Oreos. And if I go to a cafe and they have a barista style milk with a little bit of seed oil in it, I'm not gonna freak out. But for me, being healthy is also not being afraid of any food and being flexible enough to eat those things sometimes. So that's kind of where I'm at. Let's prep a quick chia pudding for after the gym and get going. I'm back from the gym. I'm actually starving. I started my day a little later than usual because I'm filming today and oh girl, it's hitting me. So hopefully the chia pudding is ready. We got some vanilla chia pudding, some granola, blueberries, and we are good to go. The garbage truck literally just got here. Kind of matching with my breakfast today. I'm gonna eat my breakfast and then get in the shower and we'll start prepping some of the other things that we're gonna eat today. 
We are approaching lunchtime. We're gonna do a whole bunch of prep and I'm actually gonna film a recipe video. So I'm gonna need to use this camera, but I'm gonna have a quick creamy as a snack while I prep curry udon with tofu, which is gonna be my lunch. I love the Ninja Creamy Machine because it makes eating protein ice cream so easy. I'm a fan of like super thick spoonable smoothie bowls and the Ninja just makes it a little easier and has these containers that you can like prep in advance in. So you don't need a creamy, but if you like ice cream texture, really, really amazing for making protein ice cream. If you like smoothies, any blender will do. We're gonna try a new protein powder that I just got in the mail. So I got all this protein sent to me today. This is from Happy Viking. This is Venus Williams brand of protein. And I don't know if the sisters are both vegan, but I know at least one of them is plant-based. And it seems like it's actually got way more than just protein. Strawberry smoothie one. I've never tried this before. Then we've got the individual packs, one of each. We've got vanilla, chocolate, another strawberry, green colada, Tropical smoothie, limited edition. Iced coffee, which I'll have to give to a friend. Cookies and cream, which sounds very up my alley. And then berry parfait, which is also limited edition. Not to be boring, but I think I'm gonna try the chocolate one first because I feel like it's a good basic flavor that any brand should be able to get to taste good. For the creamy bases, it's gonna seem really random, but this is the formula that I like the best. Some kind of protein base, a little bit of jello vanilla pudding mix, which is vegan actually, surprisingly. It just helps with the texture a little bit of the creamy. And that's basically all I do. One pack of this tablespoon or two of jello pudding mix. Let's make a strawberry one too. Oh my god, that actually smells really good. It smells like strawberry milk. Sometimes I just feel like vegan protein powder, the serving size is so big. This is a base that I made last night. I'm just gonna throw it into the creamy machine. This is really the equivalent of just having like a protein smoothie or a protein shake. Nice little extra protein in the morning. Lunch is ready. We have this curry udon. This is actually a curry recipe from my cookbook. And then I just added udon noodles. I thought I had firm tofu, but all I had was silken. So I was gonna do like a grilled tofu and put it on top of this bowl. And then that would be my protein component. But alas, I have no tofu. So at least I had my little protein creamy. It's fine. The average at the end of the day is more important than each single meal. So it's gonna balance out. We'll be okay. <laughs> but if you have never tried udon with curry, so good. Japanese curry, if you've never had it, is a little bit sweeter, definitely more mild than probably the curries that you're used to. And not super spicy either. I do have a gluten-free udon noodle recipe on my blog. It's tedious to make, but it is delicious. Okay, I'm gonna eat my lunch while I finish up some editing on my laptop and then I'll see you guys in a little bit to prep dinner. Welcome to the office. I've been working a lot more at my desk, which I'm really proud of myself for. Finishing up emails, and then I have to book a flight for New York because we have so many cookbook event dates coming up, which is really exciting. If you haven't already pre-ordered the cookbook, I'll also leave that in the description box below because, oh my gosh, so much is happening. Um, and I'm having a quick snack. It is potato chips. I have never been into chips my entire life. Honestly, I think the thing about finally learning to eat intuitively is that when I eat chips, I just have a handful and I'm like pretty satisfied. I just love it for the crunch factor. Back when I really used to restrict when I was in like, you know, middle school or high school, I probably couldn't eat chips without like eating the whole bag because I was so hungry from restricting myself all the time, you know? So, listen, are potato chips healthy by any means? No, not really, but I'm gonna do a few more emails and then we're gonna head downstairs to the kitchen again and just throw together a salad. Collect everything in a bowl for now. Next up is kale. And I really like this variety of kale, dinosaur kale. I like to thinly slice it like this into little ribbon pieces. And then once the kale's cut, I like to give it a squish like a little pre-massage, just a rough chop. Brussels sprouts, just raw, shredded. I'm using navy beans, which are white. <laughs> Some cooked quinoa. We're gonna add this amazing caramelized shallot dressing. I did not plan well, because all I have is chopsticks right now. All of my utensils are in the dishwasher, but that's okay. For dessert. I have these Oreos covered in matcha chocolate. Two of my favorite things in the whole world, together. Look at how good that looks. It is so good. To make these, I just dunked Oreos, gluten-free Oreos, in Nekohama's uh, matcha chocolate, covered it, put it in the fridge, 
Topped it off with a little bit more Oreo dust and it is, mm. We're gonna wrap up the video here because I'm basically gonna get ready and go to bed after I clean up a little bit more. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and if you like what I eat in a day videos and you wanna see more of them or you wanna see more high protein meal ideas, let me know in the comments below. I just haven't had quite as much inspiration for YouTube videos because I never know what you guys wanna see. I know the matcha videos are of high demand, but when it comes to everything else, I feel like I'm very lost and I need to get back to my roots. So I mean it when I say let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I'll leave links to everything in the description box below, things I mentioned, recipes, and so on. If you haven't already pre-ordered the cookbook, do that. I'll leave a link to get either a signed copy or a regular copy. And stay tuned on Instagram because we will be announcing so many events and opportunities for us to hang out in real life. And oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. See you in another video soon. Bye.